Hey Air Nerds! So I am preparing for the Small Press Expo in Bethesda, Maryland this weekend. And this is the prep vlog slash recap vlog. We'll see. If it ends up getting too long, I'll divide it into two. So what I want to cover in this vlog is um, just kind of broad strokes. I don't want it to be longer than an hour. So I'm not really going to spend a lot of time showing you guys what I'm bringing in advance. We can talk about that at the table. And I'm not really going to spend a lot of time talking to you guys about the setup, partially because I'm sharing a table with a friend. And we have not 100% solidified the setup. We want to do a demo setup first, so that'll be a better opportunity to talk about it then anyway. So for those of you who don't know, SPX, the Small Press Expo, is kind of a big deal indie comic con in the United States. Ape used to also be a really big deal indie comic con. It's kind of fallen by the wayside. Some other big deal indie slash maybe not so indie comic cons are Emerald City Comic Con, Rose City Comic Con, and Heroes Con in North Carolina. Um, other than Heroes Con and Staples, if you count Staples as, a, as the South, because Staples is in Austin, Austin, Texas, there aren't any really big indie comic shows in the South. And by the South, I mean like Tennessee, the Gulf South, Kentucky, those sort of areas. So um, those of us who make comics kind of in the, the Southern part of the United States, we have to travel. And travel is expensive, as you guys know. So SBX has gotten really, really big. I first did it in 2013. I've put in every year since 2013. Now, in 2019, is the only other time I've gotten a table in their lotto system. So SBX is lotto system, not merit system. This means that artists, theoretically, because sometimes anime cons with their lotto systems, things get kind of weird. Um, Theoretically, it being lotto system means it's not just the people who are the fastest to submit their information, and it's not just the people who are already very popular and very established, although SBX invites a lot of guests. So if you are popular and established, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be invited to go to SBX. Um, but for the rest of us, for us working Joes, um, it's lotto based, and uh, it takes them about a month to decide who's going to be able to table with them. And I won a table, and I invited my friend Kabocha to share the table with me. So we're going to be at SBX under the banner Tiny Cats, which represents uh, Niji. And I'm looking for Bowie, and he's under my desk. Otherwise, I would like hold him up so that you guys can be like, oh, he's so cute. So what I am bringing to SBX, I wanted to bring volume two. I wanted to bring volume two so, so, so bad. And it's still not done. And I feel really crappy about that. Um, and I know why it's still not done. It's because I've been teaching mama got to earn money to pay them bills, y'all. Um, so unfortunately, I won't be bringing volume two with me. But I'll have a bunch of minis. I'll have seven inch Kara. I'll have a bunch of charms, including some of my super cute new designs. And I'll actually give you guys a peek, a flip through peek, in fact, at all the awesome stuff I'm gonna have with me at SBX in just a moment. And I've been promoting the heck out of my presence at SBX because XBX is pretty much the only con in the continental US that you, if you're an indie comics person, there's probably going to be editors there who might be interested in your work. And literally every time I go to an editor talk at like SCBWI, it's like, well, are you doing SBX? And it's like, y'all know SBX is lotto based, right? Like it's not with, I can put in, but it's not within my control as to whether I make it. So. Um, I am really excited for SBX. I'm also really excited to get to meet Kino Kitsune um, for the first time. And yes, I do know their name, but they're a very private person. And out of respect for their privacy, I'm going to be referring to them by their web handles rather than by their given name. Um, we have a lot of really cool stuff planned. They're going to show me how to use a Cricut so I can actually finally start using my Cricut. They're going to show me how to do better foiling so I can start adding foil elements to my work. So I'm really excited and I'm excited to share that with you guys. Hey art nerds, good morning. It's about nine o'clock and today begins our SBX journey. Hey guys, good morning. So we are about to head off to the Marriott for SBX. It's almost nine o'clock so we're about to head over, pick up our badges and get set up. Hopefully we'll see you guys there.
Art Nerds, good morning. So this is the second day of SPX. SPX is a two-day show, Saturday and Sunday. This morning, there was a meetup going on from 10.30 to uh, 12, actually. We skipped that, tired. Come see us at the show instead. Um, last night, we went out for dinner with Rich and Kathy, who I've mentioned in the ALAAC 2018 video, and got to meet a lot of really interesting older comic artists and cartoonists, so we really had a good time last night. Um, so this morning, a little slow to start, but that's okay because SBX doesn't start until noon, and it runs from noon until 6. Yesterday, it started at 11 and ran to 7, but we were there at like 9.30 to set up since we had a lot of stuff. Um, so SBX is becoming, I think in 2013 I wrote a blog post about my experiences with SBX. SBX is becoming much, much more tolerant towards anime art styles, anime artists, the girls next to us, that's their background is anime cons entirely. This was their first indie comic show, but they did have a lot of books on the table. Uh, we were next to Intera Bang Studio, who I feel like you can tell their main audience is anime cons because they had a massive setup that drastically intruded on our working space. Yay, anime con setups. Um, so, uh, Behind the table. Behind the table. Well, I will, we will have you walk around and they'll be able to see the different kinds of setups that are up today. So I'm sure y'all will see the Intero Banks setup. Um, sales were not like amazing, super good. Um, part of that is because my table mate doesn't have a lot of stuff themselves. And then the other part is that I don't have really any new books. Uh, I didn't get volume two out in time. So it's not like I have this brand new debut book. And uh, Volume 1's been out since 2014, so not quite as hyped for that as I would normally be. Um, also, just like, I still feel like SPX is really good if you are a larger name, if you're tabling with your collective and you guys have a lot of books, if you're there with a publisher or if you are a publisher. But that's not to say that SPX doesn't have its own things that make it worthwhile. I think I've talked in other videos about some shows being networking shows and some shows being sales shows, and SPX is really much more of a networking show. Everybody who we've encountered so far have been very, very nice, very approachable. It's a great way to purchase comics from people that you look up to or from your peers or people who are up and coming. Um, it's a very approachable down-to-earth show, and I think that's their intention. The only reason we don't make SPX every year, other than not getting a table every year, is that living in Nashville, we have to fly to Bethesda, get a hotel room, and if you're not tabling, then you're really not necessarily recouping your expenses. And it isn't necessarily the best con for someone who has absolutely no experience working with editors, doesn't have any networking, doesn't have any of those connections. It's not necessarily the best con to go up and like cold contact editors or cold pitch to editors, especially since a lot of editors are very clear about what they're looking for and when they are and are not open. So um, if you do have some of those contacts or you'd like to start developing those contacts, this can be a good show, um, but it's not necessarily like, you're not necessarily gonna get a portfolio review. So um, just kind of plan accordingly. And I'm, I'm caging that very carefully because I do honestly believe that like, Certain artists are just so skilled, so talented, that they probably could get those things. But I would say for your average artist, because the skill level at SBX is very high, you're not just gonna walk in and impress some editor and they're just gonna take you on the spot. But that's not a reason not to go. It's just something to think about when you're spending all that money to get to SBX. I would say for that amount of money, if you live in like Canada, you do TCAF rather than SBX. Or um, I wish I had other comparable US shows because Ape is no longer as good as it used to be. Um, our Rose City Comic Con is growing. Emerald City Comic Con is supposedly great. I don't have any experience with either of those, so I can't compare them. Um, but some of the other indie cons I've, I've done around the country, like Space or Nokus Fest, do not necessarily attract editors at all. So um, depending on where you live in the country, SBX might be your only chance at anything like that. I'll also say that I haven't noticed any editors walking past my table personally. Um, there's a few that I remember. I used to be pretty well connected. I'm not as well connected now, so faces have changed. 
but I don't see them walking around. They may be going to like directly to a table of someone they know. So the chances of you being randomly discovered, especially if you're like off in some corner of the room, is not necessarily the greatest. And I'd like to see things change to help facilitate that because there's lots of great comic artists and I'm constantly hearing editors talk about looking for talent, looking for new talent. So I'd like to see something bridge that gap and having a packed con does not necessarily bridge that gap. And that's not on SBX. I'm just trying to um, help set your expectations for what you could expect attending SBX. So I, I think we're about ready to head out. Alright, so we are at SPX, Sunday morning, heading over to our table. I believe it's not quite open yet because it's not quite noon. because it's kind of loud in here and I don't think I can yell louder than the crowd. So this is our table at SBX. It looks quite different from my normal table. When I share with another artist, I like collaborating on the table design so that it reflects both of us rather than like all the stuff that I already own. So this is Kabocha's beautiful iridescent tablecloth on top of a black um, length of fabric and it has this really nice iridescent kind of witchy feel going on. And there's Yes. We're also sharing the spinner rack. Now, now you embrace the sparkles. All the sparkles. Exactly. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So SBX, if you guys don't know, is really more of like an original art, a zine, um, a mini comic, an anthology, a print comic kind of convention. So I know on this channel we've talked a lot about anime cons. We've talked some about SCBWI, we've talked about library shows, so this is kind of a different kind of con. If you guys remember my TCAF video, similar to that, but maybe a little bit more packed. SPX works on a lotto system, so if you want a table, you apply for a lotto. It's not first come, first serve. It's not invitation entirely. There is a lotto aspect to it, and that's to facilitate newer artists being able to get a table fairly. They also provide a lot of food and beverages so that if you have less money, you don't have to go out to like McDonald's. Um, so if you're in this area, XPX, if you can get into it, is a really great con. But for those of us, like I mentioned in the hotel room, for those of us who live in other parts of the country, I appreciate the accommodations they're making, but it's still a really expensive show to be at. And um, it is a really good show for meeting other comic artists, getting to talk to other comic artists, especially for those of us who live in kind of isolated parts of the country. This might be our only opportunity to get to talk to and meet other comic artists face to face. Um, so this is my half of the table. For SPX, we focused a lot on more original things. So I have 7 Inch Care Volume 1, Volume 2 wasn't finished in time. I have one final copy of Thousand and One Nights for Sale. I also have a bunch of mini comics and zines. We are having a tip off between Bowie and Niji, who is cuter. They're both pretty dang cute. I'm also selling our laser cut wooden charms, some hand painted wooden charms, and I have mini prints and original art for sale as well. <laughs> So what has mostly sold so far has been charms and um, some of the mini comics. And I have sold a few copies of Kara, but not like buku amounts. Um, because I do kids comics and it's like primarily kids comics, sometimes at indie shows that have an older demographic, it can be a little bit harder for me to 
sell because they're just not reading those kind of comics themselves. So I think that's about all I have to say right now. I'm sure Joseph will take you guys on like a mini tour so you can see more of what's going on at SPX this year and find inspiration for yourself. If you're interested in tabling at a show, if you're new to conventions, I'm looking for my postcards. So I'm back in Nashville. It is actually the Friday after I got back, so it's been almost a week. I'm back with Bo, who wanted to be on my lap and is not a big camera cat, but he looks good on camera. So if you hear a lot of meowing, you know who it is. Um, he's probably going to be wig waggling a lot too. We'll see how this goes. So I have a written list of the costs, the pros, and the cons for SBX. If you're more of a reading person than a listening person, I am also. You can find them over at netasuit.blogspot.com. There's going to be a bit of a transcript over there as well. So we're going to talk about the costs first. And I want to point out that my costs are probably not the same costs that other people who are tabling at SPX might have. Some areas are going to be lower. Some areas are going to be a lot higher. So I want to point out, number one, I shared a table with a friend. So they paid half on things like hotel and half on things like the table itself. I also want to point out that I brought someone to assist me, so a lot of my totals should be halved. So the flight to uh, Pennsylvania where I was picked up on Southwest was $350, but I paid $200 because I cashed in a lot of Southwest loyalty points. Most of those loyalty points have been accrued flying to shows over the years or flying back and forth to Louisiana to visit family. So that's not something that's necessarily accessible to everyone. Now I like flying Southwest for cons because I get two check bags free plus a carry-on plus a personal bag. So like I could theoretically have two huge 50 pound bags, one smaller 50 pound bag because those overhead bins have a weight limit of 75 pounds. Don't know if people know that, but you should. Um, and I could have a backpack that is just ridiculously heavy and I could be able to get on the plane with a fair amount of stuff. And then when you fly with two people, that's four check bags, um, two additional carry-on bags. So you can bring a lot of stuff on Southwest without paying a lot of money. Um, my hotel room, we could not book at the SPX Marriott. It was the 25th anniversary. They were booked out about a month ahead of time. So there's just nothing to book. So we stayed at a nearby Hilton. We paid 286 total and 143 was my share. We had to take a lift from the Marriott to the Hilton on the first day and then on the second day we parked in the free parking garage on Sunday. So the lift itself was $83 total. Um, we also needed to bring my friend back. They weren't feeling well and they didn't want to go back by themselves which I 100% understand and I would have wanted someone to go back with me as well. So um, there was a lot of back and forth between the, the Hilton and the Marriott on Saturday. The food total was uh, 203 split between two people. The table cost was 200 split in half, so that's about 100 my share. And the estimated amount spent on comics was about $290. Um, I did trade a lot, but I have this bad habit of um, I will give people my comics for free, and then I won't let them give me comics in return. I'll make them 
I will pay them for it. So it's like, I could have been a little more savvy about that. But when I go to comic shows, I also get just so excited about supporting other artists. I don't think about supporting myself. Um, so I'm sure you guys can kind of understand where I'm coming from with that. Um, my total con cost, and this is estimated, and this is for two people, is $879. My total sales were $225, which is was not good. Like, let's be real. That's not good. So, um, SPX for me is not a financial con. It seems like for a lot of people it's not. So, uh, didn't sell as many books as I wanted. Sold a lot of charms. Mm, still kind of figuring stuff out with SPX. So, some of the pros. I got to meet my friend Kabocha, who has been a close online friend for a long time. So that was awesome, and that kind of just makes up for the whole trip in general. I had a lot of fun just in general being at SBX and being up north and doing fun things. I got to see Kathy and Rich again. If you guys don't know about Kathy and Rich, I actually, well, Joseph interviewed both of them, and they are so awesome. So cool. They've been such a gift in my life in terms of just themselves being awesome, and then they are very generous about introducing me to people which is phenomenal because they are older than I am and they're more established than I am. So the people they can introduce me to are people who would never talk to me natively. So I'm so grateful to have friends who are willing to pass the, the baton back so that younger artists can move forward. So I'm super grateful to get to see Kathy and Rich again. Um, also got to meet a lot of older comic pros at the dinner that Kathy and Rich hosted. These are people who, again, would just be pretty much out of my access. Even if I went to the table and bought from them, it doesn't mean that they would engage me. Having that intermediate intermediary do an introduction and vouch for you makes a huge difference, which is why I like introducing friends to friends because um, I'm vouching for them and I wish more people would do that on my behalf. So I'm very grateful to Kathy and Rich for doing that. Um, most, most of my neighbors were awesome. Um, I felt like an actual comic artist interacting with peers. Now that's a big one for me because, um, when I do a lot of anime shows, the attitude is just different. A lot of people who do anime cons, um, are doing a lot of prints. They can be very competitive, competitive. They can be kind of cutthroat. There's not a lot of kindness. Whereas at, at XBX, the attendees were awesome and the other people tabling were very awesome and generous. So it was really nice to just be in a more positive environment for my field. The attendees, by the way, were awesome. Everybody was super nice. Um, as I said, most of the other artists were awesome. There were water fountains everywhere, which is important for hydration. Hydration is a thing that we need to do. They had an excellent program guide. I kept it with really beautiful art. Like, I love the cover. Beautiful art. And then inside, and I'll show you guys in a little bit, but they have all of their panels explained. I did not get to see any panels though, unfortunately. And then all of the exhibitors, my only complaint, and they have a map, my only complaint regarding this is just that it was hard because a lot of us go by online handles, people might not recognize your real name if you use your real name. And then a lot of us use avatars online and people may not recognize you because you don't look like your avatar. So, um, that's definitely just something to think about, I guess. And there didn't really seem to be a delineation between kid-friendly tables or tables selling stuff for kids. So I think some other artists on Twitter are talking about that more in depth. I may revisit that topic, but I don't want, this video is already long and I don't want it to go super long. Um, so excellent program with really nice art. Uh, wider alleys than what they had in 2013. It got crowded, but it never got horribly claustrophobic. People could still move around. Um, I was able to meet several Twitter mutuals and other webcomic artists, which is so nice because it makes you feel like you're part of a community again. And I know some people, they're good with just the online aspect and that's okay, but I'm a social person and I like meeting people in real life and getting to like see them and interact with them and buy their stuff from them in person. So that means a lot to me. And then there's a lotto system that gives more artists a shot at the table. And I know that's also been a, a area of discourse. I feel like, I feel like no matter how cons divvy out tables, people are going to have complaints. But I was really happy to be there again. The last time I got in was 2013, and I've put in every year between 2013 and 2019. So it's been six years since I went to SBX, and I don't feel like I was owed a table or entitled a table or anything like that. Okay, so let's talk about cons. 
I didn't actually see many editors at SBX, and this is a big deal for me because graphic novel editors, comic editors, editors at different comic companies and comic friendly companies make a really big deal about how you need to be at SBX, and then they don't show up. Or if they show up, they're only doing panels. Or if they show up, they're only at the table selling books. They're not actually getting up and walking around. And for comics to be really egalitarian, you need that element of random discovery that kind of makes things more egalitarian. Yeah, we have the internet. We can post our web comics. We can interact with one another on Twitter. We can have a tenure running blog. We can have a YouTube channel. <laughs> Who am I talking about, guys? But, but like people don't leave their online social circles much either, and they don't get exposed to new things unless people recommend things to them. So having SPX, having any kind of any Comic Con where editors get up, walk around, talk to people, do portfolio reviews, um, just generally engage with the next generation of artists is really important. And I really didn't see it. I don't know if it's because I was in C Block and they weren't making it, making it there, or it seemed like so. So Joseph was always trying to push me away from the table to go talk to people. His big thing, but. I've also noticed that when I stay at the table, I actually meet more of the people I want to meet because they've come over to say hi. I, we just have bad timing because every time I left, somebody would come to say hi. Um, so I'm wondering if like maybe my timing was just bad and every time, sorry, my monitor died. Every time I left the table, editors were the ones coming around. But you know, there's no way to tell if somebody's an editor either. And um, I know some editors like incognito mode, so I don't want to take that away from them. But a suggestion would be if you want people to pitch to you, if you're looking to give advice, tell tell people that you're an editor, wear a pin that says you're an editor, something like that, to um, just kind of give that heads up because otherwise we're going to try to sell to you the same way we would try to sell to anybody else. So um, that's the big disappointment for me because SBX is expensive, SBX is far away, um, I'm not a particularly popular comic artist, so I need shows like SBX where I can continue to show my work and get feedback from people who know a little bit more than I do, and I feel like in that regard SBX was not useful. Um, so I also thought maybe having editor badges, but I understand that might be a bad thing because people can get really weird. Um, and there's really no noticeable delineation for kid-friendly and kid-lit tables. There's no balloons for those tables. There's no, we're not in like, I think maybe we were in a kid-lit section or a kid-friendly section, but there wasn't anything to like say, hey, this is good for kids. So I don't know. Like there was no signage at the show for that. Um, in fact, the only signage that was up were these giant balloons that had like our blocks in them. And I didn't even know we had those until Sunday. So I could see people who are maybe are new to this or are distracted by taking care of their kids missing those sort of signs. Um, book sales were lower than usual, like way lower. Like I do better at Handmaid and Bound. I do better at A2 Cap. I do better at a lot of anime shows. So um, a lot of artists are also going to talk about like SBX is like the big deal. And it, it can be a big deal. We don't have enough good indie shows in the U.S. anymore. So it, just by elimination it's a big deal but I'd like to see that change as well so that so much isn't hinging on one show that happens once a year in one part of the country um so here's the biggest con for me is my one of our neighbors backdrops blocked the exit I showed you guys that um and this is an exit that was shared by all of C block and so anybody leaving our leaving our block avoided their backdrop because you couldn't see what was on the other side of it it could have been glass for all we know and kept bumping into our tables even our, our table even though we'd moved our stuff to leave a gap so i feel like because this is an indie show with shared space i feel like it was disrespectful on the part of that other artist to not leave enough of a walkway for people to rely on my table and my my partner's table to leave a walkway rather than doing their part to leave a walkway. So what had been like, I guess a 90 degree angle of exit turned into like a 45 degree angle of exit entirely on our side of things. So we didn't have room behind our table to put things. We could not have displayed things. We could not, um, I had to work really hard to get in just because getting between my table mate and that person's setup was like this much space. And I'm fairly thin. So um, I would like to see more consideration not most of the people there are seem like they are very considerate people. They left lots of room for other people. But like just be considerate that your backdrop might interfere with other people, especially if you're at a corner. Um, it, it tends to be shared space, which is why when I saw we were at the corner of C Block, I was like, no, because I was at a quarter 
the last time I did SBX and a corner is basically half the space. They put twice as many people in half the space. Um, so lighting in there was really dim. It caused eye strain for me. And if you don't live in driving or train distance, SBX is an expensive con. And we need more indie cons across the US, like viable indie cons that editors go to, that popular artists will go to, that have import popular enough guests that it can attract a local population. We need more good indie cons in the US, um, especially those that would have um, actual hiring opportunities. That's a really big deal. Most of us are broke. Most of us would like to make some money. So can we, can we return to the days when this was a hiring opportunity again? Because that wasn't that long ago. And as I said, sales weren't great. I basically lost money during SBX this year. I don't have a publisher funding me. I don't have an editor funding me. It comes out of pocket. So um, I had a great time. Don't, don't let my complaints fool you. It, it definitely wrecked me. I'm exhausted. And then I had to go straight into teaching and that exhausted me too. So right now I'm fighting a headache, but I had a good time. I would recommend attending SBX if you're in the area. There's loads of amazing artists every year. I would also recommend tabling, like putting in and tabling if you get the opportunity. But um, just kind of go in with adjusted expectations. And um, anyway, uh, so Joseph got a couple of artist interviews sharing their experiences with SBX. So I am interested to see how their opinions differ from mine. I'm eager to see it. I hope they do. Um, and I hope you guys will watch those too. And if you're looking to learn how to table at shows, I want you guys to check out how to be a con artist um, .tumblr .com. That is the convention help blog I co-run with Kiriska. I usually handle more of the indie stuff. So if you have indie questions, please write in. I get so tired of print questions. So tired of print questions. So tired of AliExpress questions. Um, and uh, ba, 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 ba. oh, and check out the other artist interviews here on this channel, including our SBX 2013 interviews, because Joseph interviewed Raina Telgemeier and Tyson Hess in 2013. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you were at SBX, let me know where you were and how your experiences went at the show. And hopefully I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye guys. He says, no, why do you do this to me? My grandma mistakes.